We're live. We are live. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, everyone. And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, we are going live in our Facebook group, but we're also going live in multiple other Facebook groups, and we will be uh, providing the recording as well. So a lot of people will be seeing us. So thank you so much for joining us today in our Distinguished Speaker Series. For those of you who are new here, my name is Asma Wasti, and I'm the creator of the Webinar Accelerator, where I teach people on how to fill their rooms with audience, even if they have zero followers, and scale their business using webinars and close their clients consistently, regularly, streaming income month over month. Um, and, and I'm so happy. And this is what I do also in terms of collaboration with our members that are part of our entrepreneurial journey together. So I collaborate with them, provide them a platform to talk about themselves because we can all learn from each other. And that's why I created this Distinguished Speaker Series. And thank you so much, guys, so for joining us. I know those who are going to comment, the challenge with uh, uh, with the StreamYard is that your name doesn't show up. So if you could put your name, that will be awesome. Then we can find out who it is. So it'll be great. Um, so, and that's why we, we can learn all from each other. We can find motivation in each other. We can find the, that mindset that we need it. Sometimes we need a little bit of a happiness and clarity and motivation, and that's why we do that. Uh, it provides so much more. Uh, it's only 30 minutes. So today, who's joining us is Renu Ravalia from London, England. I have thank you and welcome for joining us today, Renu. I so appreciate you coming on board on this and joining us live from England. Yeah, I'm actually not in London. I'm actually in Leicester, which is about You're two Leicester. hours from London. But I'm from London originally. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us from Leicester because I'm also, I also say I'm from Toronto, but I'm actually north of Toronto in a small <laughs> town. But you know, people can place you when you say that. So hi, Monica. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Nicole. He's here from India. Thank you guys. So I am going to bring and we're going to talk about Renu. Uh, her story, she has an amazing story to tell her journey as, an, uh, as a person, as an entrepreneur, to what she does, bringing her to this point where she is right now at, in her entrepreneurial journey and what makes her so unique in doing what she does. So take it away, um, Renu. Tell me about your um, childhood, where you were born and raised and how it went. So I am a middle child. I've got two sisters, one older one who now lives in Nigeria and the younger one who's in the UK, in London, sorry. Um, I guess the best way to start is with my parents. So my dad is originally from India. He moved to the UK. My mum had been studying in the UK and they got married when mum was 21 and um, obviously started their life and stuff. And I guess that's kind of early life. Um, mm -hmm was quite I'd say I was quite studious you know quite enjoyed you know school and studying and stuff um went through school uh, then got to university doing university studied psychology and that was kind of the beginning of I guess where I am now um I think also the kind of entrepreneurial journey my parents spent a lot of time working for themselves so my dad had his own businesses and um you know mum mum was supporting in that way as well and I think from the community I'm from, which is Sindhi, for those who don't know, we um, are a very entrepreneurial community. So it's actually in the bloodline because we Ooh. were from Pakistan. And we moved from Pakistan after partition to anywhere you could find money, to be honest. So Sindhis are everywhere in the world. So it, it is in the blood. I've got a lot of family members who also have their own businesses. So I think also I just think Sindhi friends. So I can tell you, yes, they are highly entrepreneurial for sure. But was that in you? Is that is that in all of your siblings or just you? You have a so, sister, right? So my older sister, um, she actually runs a charity in Nigeria, something that her and other ladies came together. Uh, mm. Younger sister, uh, probably a bit less. Um, mm. I'd say I'm the one that's probably the most entrepreneurial. Um, mm. I'd always been quite kind of quite taken back by people who've got their own businesses was never ambitious, to be honest, never ever had ambition when it came to working in a career. But the second I was myself, it just, everything just changed because when you work for yourself, everything you're doing is for you. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it's a completely different sort of headspace, really. Um, but yeah, so community wise, we are a very entrepreneurial community. A lot of my uncles and aunts and uncles mainly have their own businesses as well. So that kind of tells you a little bit about, gives you some foundations for my upbringing. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So, okay, so you, you showed the signs from, for, for that kind of a thing from the beginning. But did you have any kind of challenges in your life that actually took you to that next level or, or pushed you away? Or you had to put that entrepreneurial thought on the, on the back burner thinking, no, it's no longer for me. I can't do it. I don't think I had the conscious awareness of being an entrepreneur, to be honest. I think I always mm -hmm. admired people who could do it. It's not something I ever really thought of myself because you don't. I mean, unless you have something to be an entrepreneur about, you're not, it's not something that comes to your mind. Um, my kind of journey was very much, I did psychology as a degree because I loved it. I loved psychology. I love the human mind. I love behavior. I found it so fascinating. So I did that as a degree. Already that was a bit different. I've always been a bit different. Everybody in sort of, everybody normally does business. It's kind of the most... Mm -hmm my dad saying to me why are you doing psychology like what is that about and to be honest I had no idea I just did it because I just loved it uh -huh. so I guess when it comes to like challenges and stuff obviously you leave university and you just have no idea what you're doing no idea mm -hmm. so entrepreneur journey didn't come till much later I have to say so we'll talk a bit more about kind of just the journey early on mm -hmm. a psychology degree and finished university and fell into kind of working with kids with disabilities that was kind of the space I was in. And um, when you're an Indian woman, you have this thing where you know you're going to have to get married at some point. And although I worked in kind of quite supportive roles with children, with adults, etc., I think I was always searching for more. Mm -hmm. So I never really stayed in a job for very long. It was like three months here, six months there. And the only job I stayed in for a good amount of time was actually working in the school when I did the one-to-one -one work. Mm -hmm. so the last job I had was um, working with young people with disabilities and that was in the community then I got married so I left London so I got married left London moved to Spain and it was actually in Spain where I recognized a bit more of the entrepreneurial spirit to be honest mm -hmm. what happened in Spain was I got married I moved there and I didn't know the language couldn't speak Spanish uh -huh. over there it was a small island I was in which is Las Palmas and because I didn't know the language, I couldn't really communicate with people. Mm -hmm. So I realized this passion for writing. I just started love, I just loved writing. Mm -hmm. So I started a blog for myself, and it was a fashion-based blog. And through that blog, um, I worked with other magazines and I was writing for them. And that was my first, I guess, step into kind of entrepreneurship because I was getting paid for it. Um, I never really saw myself as an entrepreneur then, though, to be honest. It was not something, you know what is an entrepreneur you know it's yeah. It's, a, yeah. Something people, yeah, it's a label that we people give but we don't know exactly what is it right because an entrepreneur is also a mindset coach is also an entrepreneur somebody who's selling something on amazon is also an entrepreneur like it's a wide variety like a a, a a person who's making cooking from out of their home kitchen and supplying catering is also an entrepreneur right but yeah. they don't understand or realize that i agree yeah, yeah. And I, so and and the, and you were young, quite young at that time. So it was harder for you to wrap your head around that. I was in my late twenties then. Um, mm -hmm. I think also with the entrepreneur thing, I wouldn't call myself a creative person, but I said, I've got a creative mm -hmm. mind. If somebody asked me, are you creative? I'd say, no, but my mind is very creative. So I've always come up with all these ideas. Like, even while I was living in Spain, I was, um, I had said, you know, we don't do anything for Diwali, for example. Why don't we organize an event? So I started organizing women's events and I started organizing parties and stuff. <clears throat> Sorry, um, so open parties and stuff. So that is also entrepreneurial. You don't have to just get paid for it. You can still be doing stuff. So the events continued and stuff. But yeah, I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. No idea. Um, and that's the thing, yeah. you just don't know. And weirdly enough, um, it was leaving Spain. So I moved back to London from Spain and ended up getting divorced, which was quite interesting and, and quite a, a pivotal point in my life because it brought me So you to moved to Spain because of your marriage or you moved to Spain yeah, of okay, because of marriage? Okay. He was based there. He was um, brought up. He was actually from Nigeria originally, but he was brought up over there in Spain. So I moved mm -hmm. to Spain for marriage, yeah. But then obviously yeah. we moved back to London and then my divorce happened and I was just at a crossroads then. Um, yeah. You know, you just kind of a bit 
you don't get married expecting to get divorced. To, to get divorced, exactly. Yeah, and a lot of people can relate. And, and and I know, guys, if you can, and I know some of us are joining us and they're just going back and forth. I hope the internet is working okay. But please do, do comment, do continue. So if you can relate to that, if that makes sense, right? So, but there was a breakthrough. You did end up going to India. How did that happen and what happened there? That's an interesting part of your journey and story. Tell us. So the reason I went to India, I'd come back from Spain. I decided to end the marriage. And then we had um, a family wedding in, in India. So we went to India. It was around July 2012, I think it was. Went to India and... Were you working at that time or no? Not at all. I was working, but what I realized is when I came back from Spain, the kind of jobs I was doing, working in disabilities, etc., I couldn't get jobs because the kind of disability I was working with were people with kind of um, minor difficulties. But the government had changed and they were really giving money to people who had severe difficulties. And I didn't want to go in that space. It was just too much for me. So I was working, mm -hmm. I was doing jobs, but I wasn't really at a place where I wouldn't have had a career then. I'd say that I was pretty lost, to be honest. And I think that, again, is really normal. I was talking to somebody about this morning, just saying how, you know, mm -hmm. the things fall apart. You don't really know how to pick yourself up. Um, so we went to India and I actually met a religious man there. So somebody had said to me, there's this guy, he's really good. Um, he he channels from an Indian saint and would you be interested in seeing him? And he only sees like a handful of people. And I was like, look, if I'm supposed to see him, I was supposed to see him, if I'm not, I'm not. So they contacted him and he said, bring her along. So I went to go see him and I remember we walked into his house went into this dark room and all there was was just, it was all dark and there was just like an incense stick and a candle and that was it. It was, it was really, really weird. Like I've never done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I went inside, sat down and he said a few things to me. He said, one, I'm worried about you. And I was like, okay. And at that point in my life, I could have gone two ways. It's very easy to get stuck in victimhood when something like that happens. Mm -hmm. And to ask these questions like, why me? Mm -hmm. So I was at a point there when I, as a Hindu, I stopped eating, um, I started eating beef again and I kind of rebelled against everything because I didn't understand why this had happened to me. So because I'm worried mm -hmm. about it. I was like, okay. So he gave me kind of um, a whole list of things to do. So one of the things he said is do not work with children anymore. Do not work with any with disabilities. Do not work with people in that close way because mm -hmm. you're not strong enough emotionally. So he said that the marriage I'd been in had emotionally kind of really knocked me down and I was in a place where I could work one-to-one. -one. When you work one-to-one -one with, you know, young people, it takes a lot out of you energetically. So he said that. He said, read his book, which was actually, I'd say, life-changing for me because it gave me the real fundamentals of just being a good person, really. It was called The Fakir. That's the book in the picture you shared, right? What's the name of the book? The Fakir. The Fakir. Okay. It's not the one from the picture, no. This isn't a oh, No, it's a different one. Okay. Yeah, so um, he said, read my books. I read that, and it was just really, really basic um, and a really good book. Um, and I, I honestly say that I was very lucky to meet him because I don't know if I would have, I don't know where I would have been if I'd not. So he came along mm -hmm. at the perfect time. So finished with India, came back to London, and then I went and spent three months in Nigeria. So my sister, older sister lives there. And that also was just amazing. And what I found over there was I started, or I got connected to Deepak Chopra's 21 day meditation, which I loved. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me to almost see things from a different perspective. So that was kind of, again, my, that was very much, 2012 was a massive mm -hmm. turning point for me and my journey. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's amazing. So, okay. So, and here's the fakir, here's the guy, he's the guru. He's not the psychologist teaching and talking to a psychologist who's got a psychology degree, transforming the way she sees things, right? The way she, she, you know, handles things and situationally, emotionally, all that. Did you actually implement what he told you to? Yeah. So weirdly enough, I had actually had a job working with children. I had had it before I went to India. Mm -hmm. So it was already planned. I was already supposed to do it, et cetera, et cetera. When I came back from India before I went to Nigeria, I uh, it was supposed to be like a summer job. So mm -hmm. 
I came back and one day I woke up and I couldn't feel my ribs. Like I could feel my ribs, but I was in deep pain. I couldn't move. So I was kind of lying in bed like, what is, what is going on? What, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. So I went to the hospital and they said everything was normal. It was really, really weird. Um, everything was normal. And what I had to do is because I had supposed to start the job that day, I had to call them and cancel it. I honestly believe that that happened to me in order for me not to work with children. Oh. After that, and it, there's no other explanation for it because- Was that was, like a panic attack or something like that or no? I, the universe, I was guided, the universe. The universe did not want me to work with children and it would do whatever it takes to stop me. To stop and me. I did work with children. So actually it wow. was meeting him. The only jobs I was getting when I started to look for a new job was social media stuff and working in digital marketing mm -hmm. because the experience working um, with magazines and doing my blog while I was living in Spain. So, mm -hmm. so his advice stopped me from working from, with children. Um, and that was your transition point from that world to this world. You have a connection here. Monica says she has at least a connection in common. She met Deepak Chopra and worked with him many years ago. That's amazing, Monica. Thank you for sharing that. And, and she said, can relate to what you're saying. Right, the universe does send very clear messages to our body. What? I I agree. Talking to us, yeah. I, I I and I wasn't aware when I was younger, and sometimes even in older years, when we are going through in the motions of our life, we don't really. Sometimes we miss what is being talked to us at times. So that was a transition point. But now you're talking about digital marketing, but that's not your business. Tell me more about that. <laughs> so digital marketing, um, I started that in January 2013. Mm -hmm. And I was working in, in companies and, and I was doing their social media. And again, I've always had this feeling that there's more, there's more to me. So in 2016, I was doing, I was working in London and I left London to move to Leicester. I got remarried again, so my current husband lives in Leicester. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Leicester, I had this kind of yearning to work for myself again. I was like, I want to work for myself, I want to do, and all I knew was social media, that's all I knew. So moved here 2016, started working for myself, was doing social media management. And then I kind of got to the point where it was all too much. And this is the challenges you spoke about earlier. I just got married, I'd moved to a new house, I'd moved to a new city. I just was settling into my married life. Um, I was overwhelmed by life and I basically gave up. I gave up on myself, I gave up on working for myself. Everybody kept saying to me, why don't you just get a job? It'll be easier, it'll make you feel more settled, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll get a job. So I got a job and I remember talking about the universe. I remember the night I was supposed to start the job, I was up for 24 hours because I was so, it felt so wrong in my soul that I was gonna be working for somebody because I know my soul was so desperate to work for myself. It was, it, there's no other way to explain it. So I got this job, first few months were okay. And then I started to have this yearning again. I wanna work for myself, I wanna work for myself, I need more. Um, also realized that the company I was working for, their vision wasn't big enough. And there was various other things. I wanted to make sure that I, you know, work for myself so then I could look after a family, et cetera, et cetera, so I could be this there. Is, this is such a common theme, Renu, that I see and hear, even from our previous interviews that we have done before, and I, I do pre-interviews, as you know, right, ahead of time to see how, you know, what everybody's story is. And this is such a common theme. Our entrepreneur members that are part of our group and that have come on board on, on this series, I found this, they're, they always talk about this, that their own vision is so much more different or bigger than who whoever they're working for and and they can't you know it's like putting like 10 liters of water in in a two liter jar you can't it won't fit right so and that is when you know that it you know that you have to be doing something else or you know that you have to move away from the company you're working with because if, if your vision is bigger than theirs then there's a problem here because it means you can see more than they can you know and if anything, they're limiting you from reaching your your bigger potential mm -hmm. um so this was in around what we were in around, let me think, Jan 2018, right? So Jan 20, I started to get the bug again, I need to work myself, work myself. But I knew I had one problem. I knew that my problem was I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. so I got a mindset coach, somebody who worked on self-love and, and personal growth and development. And she helped me to be in a place where I was strong enough mentally to do it again. 
Now, what I'd also realized in that in that kind of time period and doing work on myself, because I'm constantly working on myself, especially since I've moved to Leicester, I think having space and getting away from London was really good for me. So what I realized was that I um, really loved working with people on a one-to-one -one basis. So for me, if I remembered what I loved the most, and this is really good for people who are thinking about working for themselves, think about what you love the most from your career. Think about mm -hmm. what you love the most. And for me, I loved one-to-one -one work and I love learning. So I decided instead of doing social media and um, doing social media for people, what if I taught people how to use social media? My mm -hmm. passion for businesses because I'd always worked in big businesses before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the underdogs who need help. So I left my full-time job. Um, on this, I had in my resignation on exactly the same day that I started the year before. And mm -hmm. I told them I want to um, work for myself. So I started social media coaching in June 2018. So that was one work helping women in business and also doing workshops as well so teaching people how to grow their businesses organically on social media mm -hmm. so um was doing that was doing that was doing that what i realized from doing that from 28 march 28 no june, june 2018 i started from june 2018 to around i'd say sort of maybe september october 2019 what i started to realize is i was doing a lot of work creating all this social media for these women, giving them instructions of what to do, and they just weren't doing it. And what I realized was it's not social media, it's not the problem, it's not the technicalities. What was a problem was they didn't have the confidence, the right mindset. So mm -hmm. I relaunched, which we know is a, is a big problem. You can, and I know this because also actually, that's something I didn't say, but, this conversation we're having now, I never would have had when I worked in a business because I didn't have the confidence to speak like this. My confidence came from working for myself and booking myself onto a talk despite the fact I was so scared of doing it. So yes. again, yes. when you work for yourself, you push yourself a lot more because you know that you're going to get the benefits from it. And you almost realize that you just, you have to do it. I had to speak. And getting my voice and doing that first talk to six people has got me here and so many more places. Um, there you go. There, that's the whole purpose. I'm so glad you said that, Renu. This is the whole purpose of my Distinguished Speaker Series as well, because it gives the platform to get talk to the people that you know that you're warmed with, uh, you know, a group, or it's the same community. So it's a safe space and a safe place to gain your confidence and the belief in yourself and, and get the confidence in your speaking. And same goes for speaking gigs. I'm so glad that you did. And that's what I tell my clients all the time, you know, get speaking gigs so that you get more and more confidence in doing so. Thank you. Thanks. And Stephanie says she loves this. Awesome. <laughs> so please go ahead. Do you see how people are connecting with you? <laughs> you know, it's that whole finding my voice and actually for those listening as well would you believe that before I started talking and speaking up talking about kind of I'm a spiritual life coach so I want to talk about that in a second it's been a bit of an evolution but what I realized is the second that I started talking up my throat chakra actually started to clear as well which is just amazing because before I'd always go <coughs> constantly I didn't know how my voice but when I found my voice I don't do that anymore so again mm. it's all it's like I think it was Monica was talking about the body and the universe you know our body has blocks as well and once we, we we break those blocks then we're free so for me doing this whole you know working for myself allowed me to find my voice which allowed me to find speaking gigs which allows me to be here right now so it's been a real journey so um yeah, so back to kind of mindset. So I found that mindset is what was missing with the ladies I was working with, and I changed what I was offering, and I started to do uh, mindset work as well as social media. And then COVID happened in March, March last year, and mm -hmm. my ideal client was starting to disappear. Everybody was a bit uncertain. Obviously, there was a lot of lack of safety and security. So I decided to take some time off and work with myself on myself. So I got some coaching um, with a lady and I set up a women's self help group, mainly because when I got divorced, what I realized was I didn't really have anywhere to turn to anybody to turn to I didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. It was very lonely. It was a very isolating journey. Um, there was a lot of judgment. And although my parents were extremely supportive, I felt very alone in it. 
So I wanted to offer people a space where they could come to, where they could just be themselves, say what they need to say, and they could grow as well. Because there's a lot of stuff out there, but what you don't have is always guidance on what to what to turn to. Set up this group in last year, August, it's called the Grow Me Project. It's a women's self-help group, it's especially for women who want to work on themselves. So we have workshops, um, I'm there holding a container and space for everybody who comes along. And just sort of offering everything that everything that my ladies need or my, my members need i'm just there but what the pivotal moment was when my husband said to me why are you spending so much time and energy on a hobby he basically said reality is my hobby and i was like no i'm not and i got really defensive now for those who don't know when you get defensive it's highlighted something in you that you haven't healed right mm. so i got defensive Obviously, I've heard this before, and I decided in that moment it was not something I just wanted to do part time. Spirituality was my life. It's what has been a pivotal part of my life. Believing everything happens for a reason. Even meeting the guy who was um, who I saw in India. All of this has made me who I am. So I decided. Well, how long? To what was the time difference between when you met him to now? Your your actual <laughs> life I purpose. Met him in 2012. And I retrained in 2020. So it took me eight years to, to get yeah. here. Um, at the end of last year, I started to retrain. And in January, I relaunched myself as a spiritual life coach. I also did a meditation course as well, so mindfulness meditation, which actually I found um, in a really interesting way. I went to a, um, a retreat and just loved the whole concept of mindfulness meditation. So I retrained in that as well. And now I help women, especially business women, who just want to build self-belief, you know, build trust in themselves and just learn to really believe in themselves. But from a spiritual perspective, like I was saying, the universe, you turn to the universe for help. And I think one thing that I wish I had done in my past, and I guess talking about, you know, regrets is important as well because we all have them. But I wish I trusted myself more along my journey because I've always known what's right and what's wrong. But it's very easy to get um what's the word it's very easy to get distracted by other people and what they want and what they think is best for you so what i do now is help women who actually just want to start really depending on themselves we heal wounds we do some you know we do med spiritual practices like meditation oracle cards as well to just mm -hmm. help women um be the best of themselves you know be the authentic true self and talking again about challenges it's brought up a lot of resistance for me mm -hmm. but, yeah, because we all have layers, don't we? Mm -hmm. And I the social media, I could act, and now I can't act anymore. This is just me. So I'm continuing to do my personal growth work. I continue to do my personal development work on myself. I'm Were you fearful, um, Renu? Should I ask? I wanted to ask you this question. Were you fearful? Because you, remember, you're a mindset coach. You're a spiritual life coach. You're, you know, um, were you ever fearful of going into on your own in this field, in this realm when you were entering? And what did you do to to help overcome that? So weirdly enough, I just asked for a lot of signs. I decided to rely on the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And I remember my biggest sign was a butterfly. I was like, if I'm supposed to do this, please send me butterflies, keep sending them to me. And I was seeing them in the drones, like it was ridiculous. And I was like, okay, I think this is right. I think, I think this is what I'm brought here to do. I feel like my purpose is bigger than just social media. And I always had this yearning for more. So I knew that there was something there. Mm -hmm. And I was at the end because the whole thing about a journey is it just continues going on and on, right? Um, there was a lot of fear. And I only realized the fear when I stepped into it. Because like I said, all of a sudden you can't hide from being yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? You That's right. So, right. you know, I think when you find your your true soul's purpose and you find your true purpose it is scary and there's going to be lots of resistance but you have to literally fight through because you have to be so sure you you, you have this feeling deep down that you know this is why you were brought here that's it and the more work i've done with people and the more kind of talks i do and the more i speak to women the more i realize that this is so needed and the more the more i feel like this is why I was brought onto this into this world because I need to give other women 
the confidence to trust themselves and, and believe in themselves. You know? And a lot of women are going to, men and women both are going to relate to you, especially women, because that's what you're targeting to. And in and, and, and my, you know, I've got this group members that are unpaid clients that I serve, and I've got a group members that are paid clients that I serve. And I find the similarities in both, actually. Even the ones that have taken that leap of faith and gone into it, they need to continue, I need to continue to work together with them as a community on ourselves to have that mindset in check because there no day goes by that you know you will be put down by others at somewhere someplace at some time who may not think who may think less of you and that can actually bring your own insecurities out that oh maybe you know the kind of imposter syndrome and that yeah. everybody talks about i think one of the most important like things that has helped me is the idea that everything is fun everybody is functioning from their own level of consciousness so just because you think something's right, if somebody else doesn't, that's okay. And mm. that's a big thing to, to realize because that means that you can take other people's opinions on, but you know what's best. And it's that knowing is what you need to always remember. And sometimes, sometimes it's difficult. You know, I always say that we're not human, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. So when we're connected to the I human. love that. I love that quote. I love it. Thank you, Renu. Mm -hmm. We're not just humans. We are human beings because we exist in yes. this body. Yes. And as humans, we are connected to, you know, we're conditioned and, and we're created. But as beings, we're these, these pure, as pure soul, we're light, we're love, we're unlimited potential. And it's trying to balance those two parts of you which can be a real struggle. Like, I'd love to live in the spirit world all the time because, you know, the universe has got my back and I can float along and I've got my cards. But unfortunately, you can't always live there. So it's about finding that balance between both those parts of you, you know? And that's what you're doing. That's exactly. So what's the name of your business? So I don't have a name. Um, maybe that's the next <laughs> step. It's just yeah. Renu Revalia. Um, my best place to find me is on Instagram. So I am Renu Revalia. And my website's the same as well. From um, Lester, yeah. And and you actually gracefully, thank you so much, kindly gave uh, the freebie away in our pot where it's equivalent to, you did it in uh, pounds, but it's equivalent to 115 US dollars that we actually put in as a reward for our five-day challenge. So that is coming up, the draw is coming up for it for tomorrow. So anybody who completes their homework today and says they're done, they will get to, and I'll get them connected to you renew for sure um so it, it it would be massive value and i look forward to having you here and adding more value to our members and our group um engage with them you know put in whatever even if you have regular you know posts blurbs quotes whatever because i love the quotes that are coming from you <laughs> that are that actually helps them with the mindset with with you know with the helping with th this is going to be you know and of course um maybe we can do something more further okay yeah. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've loved it. And I'm, I'm thank you to the ladies for, for watching and listening as well. No, really. and they all watch and recording too. Don't worry about it. They're just going places. <laughs> okay, I'll probably do that. But thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody who joined us live. So put hashtag live. And those who are seeing it in recording, put hashtag uh, recording uh, under right underneath. So we would know that you've uh, people love it, like it, and you know they're, they'll be sharing it. But thank you so much, Renew, for your time. Okay. I've one more thing to say. Guys, I look young, but actually I just turned 40. So don't think that just because, you know, you're <laughs> hitting your 40s or whatever, that you can't start the journey because you can start at any time you want. Like there's Absolutely. no happen any time. Absolutely. Oh, you look so much more younger. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you can get away with it. <laughs> People think, and I'm like, no, I'm actually, I'm, I'm really proud of being 40. And it just shows you, like, it's taken me so long to get here. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to just be patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the power to you, Renu. All the power to you. Remarkable, remarkable story. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I appreciate it. I'll see you again. Bye now. Bye. Take care.